Hi all! So a while ago on YouTube, I stumbled down a wormhole of small kitchen appliance reviews. As I was looking to buy an air fryer and perhaps maybe a pressure cooker, that's when I stumbled across one of the worst YouTube chefs of all time. His name is Jack Scalfani, as I like to call him. Jack Salmonella Scalfani. I watch video after video of him butcher, sometimes quite literally, recipes. Imagine driving slowly past a multi-car pileup on the interstate. That's my face as I watched him teach the internet how to make partially cooked meals of varying types and taking awful and unneeded shortcuts to recipes that are already quick to prepare. The absolute horror of Jack's lazy man chefing air quote techniques to my boyfriend Tom and now since we can't unsee it we are opening your eyes to it as well I'm Michelle and I welcome you to join us for this horrific journey better known as Pink Chicken and the Lazy Man Welcome back to Pink Chicken and the Lazy Man Pink Chicken and the Lazy Man Hello folks, that was Michelle Pink Chicken, I am Tom the Lazy Man And we're back for another episode Yes, you're getting two from us this week And we decided that uh, we should definitely review this one as soon as possible Because there's a ton of food crimes in this one Um, yeah, I mean this one, first of all, this is the first time he's cooked Actually cooked something This is the first one in about three episodes where it's no longer condiments with Jack We're upgrading to soup, a very popular soup from Olive Garden called Zupa Toscana, which within the first minute, he screws up naming twice. He calls it Zupa Tuscany and then Zupa Toscany. Toscany. And then he puts the, what what did you call it? The, the Red Box of Shame. The Red Box of Shame, except it's white this time. Well, no, he tries to match it to the Olive Garden's color. Oh, okay. An homage. Oh. If you're thinking about using this recipe to make for your mother this weekend, I highly advise against <laughs> It. Go just go to the Olive Garden and get her the real Zupa Toscana. Don't follow Jack's recipe. Or drive to the Olive Garden. Realize your mother should mean more to you than Olive Garden. <laughs> and get her food from a real restaurant. Yeah. This no. was released 11 hours ago because it was released on Friday, and for us it's still Friday. 1,200 views. It seems like this has picked up a little bit of interest, probably because he's cooking again. And it's really bad. And it's really bad. So he's going to get the views for the wrong reasons once again. But see, Jack, Jack has such damage to his soul that he doesn't understand negative attention. He only understands attention. Jack Cartman. Jack Cartman. (laughs) (laughs) So without further ado, let's get into it. Oh, we can't wait. Yeah, this is like 13 minutes of just... Oh yeah, this is a longer episode. I forgot about that. Remember the last episode was three minutes. It was three minutes and 47 seconds. Yeah, so we somehow extended that out to what? A 12, 15 minute podcast? Oh yeah. If if, if the last podcast was uh, was on VHS, it would come on two cassettes like Titanic. (laughs) Well, here we go. We're going to get into it. All right, folks, let's synchronize our YouTube elaters. We are counting down in three, two, one. Hit and play. All right, here's Jack. A little brighter. He's, whatever was wrong with his camera, he seems to have fixed it. This is probably the best white balance he's gotten in the past seven or eight episodes. Doesn't he mispronounce pasta fajol? Yes, he does. He calls it pasta fajol. Fajol. Fajol or something? Yeah, yeah it's it's wrong. What did you say? It's either, it's either pasta fajol, which is not the right way of saying it, but that's the way I most heard it, and most of my family's Italian. Or you say pasta fajole, because you realize that it's F-A-G-I-O-L-E. So the ingredient layout here, we have flour, which is the big cause of a lot of problems down the road. Heavy cream, potatoes, kale. And two of the, I'm sorry, three of the largest russet potatoes I've ever seen. (laughs) Salt, pepper. They're too big for even being baking potatoes. Like, they're even big for baked potatoes. Like, if you've got that on your plate, you'd be like, oh, I can't eat all that. Chicken stock. Not bone broth. That's what he's got. So here we got this rock pan. And if you notice, that's a four-quart saucepan. That's going to come into problems a little bit later, too. We're starting out not swirling the oil again. Yep, I'm already seething from that. Uh-huh. And... Oh, here comes food crime number two. Meat Please. booger. Cue the meat booger. <laughs> He swirled it a little bit. In goes the meat booger. But it's still, it's the oil is unevenly coating the bottom of the pan. And curiously, you got a big meat tube of breakfast sausage. Not really pork sausage, not really Italian sausage. It, it is labeled hot, though. Do you get that in the freezer section sometimes? I feel, like the, mix, the... I feel like the meat mix in breakfast sausage is a little bit different than regular sausage, but he was just too lazy to cut open the casing of regular hot Italian sausage. So he browns the sausage, I think. It looks like it's mostly brown, but I can't really be sure because the lighting looks 
look screwy on this close-up. Do you see like the little flecks of red in it? I don't know if that's undercooked sausage. Uh, that might be chili pepper flakes. Or chili it. pepper flakes. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to tell. But then there's a ton of um, leftover sausage grease. So then he dumps in like a pound of bacon. Yeah, way too much bacon. Most people use four strips. And clearly, this is clearly either half a pound or more. Four strips and then they crumble up the pieces. And these are these are just huge pieces. There's so much bacon, it's literally, it's a full layer in the bottom of the pan. Not a lot of people have that. And now that is mixing. So now the bacon grease is mixing with the sausage grease. Food crime, I don't know what number we're on here, but he doesn't drain the bacon properly. He right. doesn't put down the paper towel, we determined. Because he's going he's to add the bacon back in. But everybody knows when you fry bacon, if you're going to re-add it, you want to put it on a couple pieces of pa- dry paper towel. Yeah, to suck up the, the extra grease. Right. He doesn't drain the pan here. There's about a portion of bacon and sausage grease now at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Covering the entire bottom of the pan. There's at least a half a cup of grease in the bottom of this pan because when he puts the onions in it, which are poorly chopped, way too big chunks of onion and they're unevenly cut, so they're not going to cook at the same time. When he dumps that onion in, he's almost like he's boiling them. They're in water, but that's all grease. And they brown pretty good in this oil. Well, they're also, the, the onions are, you know, uh, absorbing the fat as yeah. well. Yeah. So those onions are going to be mush. And so he puts in garlic and stirs everything together. Poorly chopped garlic. For, and there's still a lot of grease in the bottom of the pan. Like the onions absorb yeah, a lot, I, but you could see that it's boiling, yeah, essentially. It's, it's turned into basically cooking oil. It's rendered completely into liquid. Now here's where it goes horribly wrong. <laughs> let's, a little let's, bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, and then... After he stirs this, this is where it gets really... Confusing. Confusing and doing. bad. And like, okay, <laughs> doing this and that. And now he's Okay, so now he's adding a lot of red chili pepper flakes. And there's still a lot of oil, of course. He hasn't drained it. He's not draining. He's, <laughs> he's not, not draining it. He's, he's not make, stopping. He's making a stand. Oh my god, this is terrifying. <laughs> this is terrifying. Like, there's going to be an oil slick at the top of this pan before this is all said and done, right? Oh yeah. But, oh, imagine when it cools off. Like, that solid cake of fat that's just going to come on the top of the soup. Yep. Now we're dumping, for what, God only knows what reason, we're dumping in flour in on top of the... About a quarter cup. Like, yeah. not even like two tablespoons. Like, this is a lot of flour. Um, on top of the onions, without draining them, without draining the grease. So he's just making flour. a roux out of sausage and bacon grease and onions. Yeah, pretty it's like much. World, yeah, it's like the world's worst roux. Ugh. There's no butter in there, so he's not proper way of making a roux. But where the doing? onions look burned to me as well. Yeah, he has not. He has not like, reduced the heat. <laughs> again, it's confusing. He's putting in the container of chicken broth. Right. He's got a box. He's got. A, he's got a box of broth. During, you know that's what. what Four cups. Say? Four cups. Most of the recipes we saw. In fact, all of the recipes we saw called for at least six to eight cups of broth. He's putting this in and like it seems like fourths. He puts a fourth of the broth in and kind of like mixes a cup of the it time, yeah. and it just becomes like glue. The flour itself is soaking up and thickening up from all the grease in there. A- adding an insufficient amount of liquid is not going to take that away. The soup that you get from the Olive Garden is not thick. It's not a chowder. It's, it's a not soup. a potato. It's, it's a broth. There's broth. Like it's not potato soup. Right. It's. I bet you he figured out. He didn't mention it. He does mention that he's used too small a pot, but that won't be till a little bit later. But I bet you at this point, Jack figured out, hey, I can't put the second box of broth in here. It's going to overflow. So I think I think this is where he paints himself into a corner, and he doesn't know how to get out of it. So now here comes the, uh, we're waiting for a moment where he's going to dump the bacon and the sausage. Oh, no, oh, no the potatoes. He, put, he puts the potatoes in. He <laughs> must have cut up all three of those huge potatoes, and he cuts them up incorrectly. And if you look really closely in the front, there's a green potato. Like, I don't know if that's like a not ripe enough potato or what's going on. He didn't get all the peel off of it, or it's a bad Bad potato, but it's green. Um, I'm gonna say bad potato. Bad potato. Each of those potatoes was like a pound each, so he put three pounds of potatoes in a four quart saucepan. It looks like the beginning of mashed potatoes, like right. but well, yeah, because potatoes the, the, aren't cut right either. Oh, that's right. Everybody else does half moons or Hasselback, as you described. The Jack just cubes the potatoes as if he was making mashed potatoes. But yeah, as if he was making mashed potatoes. Although there are a couple recipes that say dice, but they dice them small. Like well, they're the dice, not cubed. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, you cube a potato, but then you take those cubes, cut them even smaller. Oh, that's dicing. Now, the soup is at a full boil. Massive bubbles coming off the bottom of it. He says, oh, I reduced it to low to medium heat. He did not. But it's thick. You could see it's thick. Oh, yeah. Then he puts the sausage back in. Which is going to add more grease because he didn't put that on paper toweling and, either. And then he dumps the bacon back in. Which, and you just see the, gre- the bacon grease sliding in there. The bacon is cut way too big. Yeah. It's way too big. 
Right. That's not how Zupa Toscana is at the Olive Garden. Right. Most of the people who've made this recipe just use bacon bits. You just want the flavor of the bacon. You don't want to put, like, a huge, chewy piece of bacon in your soup. Because, right. again, this is supposed to be soup. So now he's dumping in the cream. Which is like food crime eight or nine, because most people tell you to kill the heat before you add the cream, so you don't so, scorch it. So you don't scald it, yeah. Eh. Nope. Screw it. It's still boiling like a witch's cauldron, and he decides <laughs> to dump the heavy cream right in there. <laughs> And you can see the cream instantly discolored from hitting all that grease. There's going to be an oil slick on the top of this. There's definitely some clotting action going on here. <laughs> he can't even stir it right now. There right. are so many potatoes in there that absorb so much liquid, he can't even stir it. It's too heavy for him to even use his bad hand to hold it there a little bit. He does not have the muscle <laughs> this strength. This is the saddest that. part. What is normally supposed to happen is there's supposed to be enough boiling liquid in the soup to wilt the kale. He's just kind of mashing it down in there. It's There's not enough liquid. Liquid, it's not happening. So he ends up putting the lid on. So uh, and, that's, and way, that's, that's when, way to wilt it is put the lid on. And that's, I think, when he realizes the pan is too small. We timed this at 9 minutes and 53 seconds. He says, oh, pan's not big enough. I've made this recipe before. Not Jack's recipe, but I've made a knockoff recipe. I used a huge stock pan for this. Mm-hmm. And while it may have only been half full, it would have been uh, a lot better than using a forequart. You see all the steam coming off of it. It's just every precious drop of liquid of broth is boiling off off of this soup now. If he would pull out the stick blender and turn this into kale sausage mashed potatoes, I would not be surprised. The taco soup was the same way. There was no liquid in it. Like, how are our soups like this? It just doesn't make any sense. Does he not I understand think... what a soup is? My one theory is that he thinks the smaller the pot, the quicker he'll get done, and the sooner he'll get it in him. No. That's... I think it's just cook small, quick. Just Again, this is, this is Jack. This is his lazy man philosophy. Like, get it done as quickly as possible because I don't want to wait. He dumps in even more. Those aren't red pepper flakes, though. That looks like chili, chili powder. powder. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, because, like, flakes look like flakes. Yeah, there's no big round flake pieces in there. I don't know. Maybe you just can't see. Look at the, focus again. If, you, if you look at the pot, oh, too. God. <laughs> he's fr- oh, He's starting, I mean, at best. Oh, at best, it looks like a thick gravy. Otherwise, this just looks like mashed potatoes. Yeah, mashed potatoes with, like, a side salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a little bit of a little Oh, bit you know, with the, red, with the red chili pepper <laughs> flake, he made mention at the beginning of the video and towards the very end of the video... He's like, yeah, Tammy doesn't like it too hot. So this is Jack's way of screwing up the soup on purpose so he gets to eat it all. Guaranteed. If no one eats it besides him and the leftovers the next day, that's going to be like getting a brick out of oh, yeah. whatever container he puts it in. Oh, even just when this thing cools down at room temperature, it's going to solidify. Yeah. you got the potato starch in there because he didn't rinse or drain the potatoes. <laughs> If it doesn't work out for that, he might be able to wallpaper his kitchen mm-hmm. with it. Oh my god! This is not Zuppa Toscana. This is this is wallpaper based. Wallpaper. This Toscana. is spackle. Yeah, this is spackle Toscana. <laughs> We get to the end of the video. He's got a huge bowl of it sitting now, and he's eating it. And he says it's a home run recipe, so the little doink comes in. Oh yeah, there's the doink. He mentions how like, oh, I'm I'm doing like a two, I'm like doing like a two stage. Mm. And he he goes he goes for full mukbang on this one. And we get to the title card at the end where he's replaced thing number two with visit my merch store. Yeah, he's not hawking the sauces immediately. In place of the sauce. This also is labeled as a fundraiser when he doesn't bring in the title card for the blue screen of hope. hope. Yeah. So that's not, that's missing. So I don't understand how he's getting away with it being a fundraiser. We never really looked at the new outro card. His, his visit my merch store is now the center panel. How many hats is he selling? Looks like one, two, three, four, six, six. <laughs> I don't know if they all say the same thing. It's really small. I can't really make it. No, out two of them. I think one of them says Jack on the go, but the, the other one the says three new ones are, yeah, I don't know what the, the all white ones say. The, the, the first two, obviously they're cooking with Jack. See, oh, he's got the cooking with Jack iPhone case. Oh, I think Mother's Day gift buying is going to go on after we finish with this. Well, let's talk about what the other YouTube chefs did that we watched when we we watched this recipe versus what Jack did. First of all, none of them used flour. Yeah, Not no. one single person used flour in their recipe because it's not... In it, fact, somebody even said that. One of the uh, the copycat woman. Yeah. She said, look, this is a soup. This is a chowder. This yeah. is not supposed to be a thick soup. Right, exactly. It's supposed to be a cream soup, but not a thick soup. They also pulled out the inner part 
of the kale. That rib is extra chewy. Yep. You got a hunk of that when he was chewing it. You could see when he ate it. You're like, yeah, because you're not supposed to bite into soup. Like, he's like, I'm going to bite into this. It's supposed to be soup. You're supposed to, you know, be able to sip it. Uh, people weren't didn't use as much bacon, or they used bacon bits just to flavor a little the, bit. The chopping. They definitely didn't. Yeah, they de- and they cut it into little tiny, tiny pieces. Like, you took a strip of bacon, cut it in half, cut it in half but again, and cut it in half. the whole pound. It looks like he put the whole pound of bacon in there, whereas they were only using, like, four pieces. It's not bacon soup, because that's not a thing. Well, good. this kind of goes hand in hand with the flour situation. He didn't use enough broth, and the broth that he did use ended up coagulating into wallpaper paste. He didn't rinse his potatoes. He didn't soak or rinse yeah, his you, potatoes. Yeah, a lot of those... So that's going to exude a lot of starch into the soup, which is going to be a thickening agent to begin with. Right. Those potatoes that he put in there, maybe if he started with half and, and went from there, he would have had a little bit more room to kind of melt and wilt the fail. The way that he chopped the potatoes was problematic. This recipe was a fail from start to finish. He fails along the same line. He's not going to pay attention to the recipe. He's going to do what he wants anyway. He's going to go off of what his half-remembered, half-listened-to information addled in the brain tells him. Like, well, like, oh, you got to put flour in it. Half of these things that he does, you can imagine Tammy saying things off-camera to him. And he's like, no, well, I think you do put it in there. I think you do add flour to this. I think it was thick, honey. The chili flakes, chili powder, we can't really tell what, what he's using. It's, no, yeah, that's not crushed red pepper flake. I yeah, just I just, I, it looked like chili powder. Yeah. That's... Gives you a different flavor, I think. Well, yeah, that's not the right. That's not, those aren't the right. Those, that's not the right peppers. Yeah, you'd use it in chili, not right. in. Those are chili peppers. Right. And you're not. Those are not red peppers. Right. And the not draining of the grease properly. That's a thing that a lot of the other YouTubers that we watched did. The usual crimes of too high a heat. Everything boils away. The <laughs> onions aren't cut the right way. He didn't really saute the onions or the or the sausage. He just almost burned them because as soon as he started pouring in the stock, you could see the black bits. This was not frond. This was not found off the bottom of the pot. Those were burnt bits. <laughs> Those were burnt pieces of onion. That was burnt garlic. But yeah, the yeah. garlic probably scorched. I don't think that the soup necessarily burned, but the things inside of the soup burned. He did not turn the heat off when he added the cream. It made me so mad. I wanted to go out and buy the ingredients and make it the correct way. I'm upset about this video because I love soup. I'm really upset about this video. So She's as upset about this <laughs> as I was about his yes, Vitamix handling. Yes, I am. We went as far as to look for YouTubers that that had way less engagement, like someone that had, what did you say, under 50? Oh, it was, I was looking for under 500 views. 500 views. We found one Zuppa Tuscana recipe video had 129 views. And it was still better by a huge stretch of the imagination. And she even modified the recipe a little bit. She chopped her onions very finely. Yep. She chopped her bacon very nicely. She used a box and a half of broth and then she added water. Yeah, and she used two things of sausage. That's how she, was, she was actually the one that said, this is a cream soup, It's not, but it's not supposed to be a thick soup and it's definitely not supposed to be a chowder. Chowder Brain Jack turned it into mashed potatoes. Someone who's been a cook on YouTube for over 10 years, 10 years, whatever, versus somebody that maybe just started a YouTube channel, That's doesn't have a following, but is by far a much better chef. And actually, like, the video quality wasn't all that bad. Like, her voice was a little annoying, but her shooting quality wasn't too bad. Like, it, it wasn't egregious. It wasn't anything special, but it wasn't she. She was in focus. Better exposure than Jack typically has on most of his videos. I feel like this is going to be one of those videos like the romantic dinner one, which is coming up in a future review. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. It's one of those ones that will go down in infamy. It'll get all these videos views and he'll make money off of it. He's been talking about making this ripoff recipe of Zuppa Tuscana for like two videos. It will get views. It'll get high views, but not for the right reasons. His viewership will spike because people will be like, oh my God, look at how bad he screwed this up. And that's that's how some of his other videos are. That's why he has the views that he has on some of his other videos. Darling, that's why we're here. <laughs> that's exactly why we're here. That's um, why we have a microphone in our living room. <laughs> I think we'll end it here unless you have any last... I just thank God that he didn't use a Vitamix this time. <laughs> All right. Although he did do the meat booger thing, which yeah. just pisses me off. Yeah, and he didn't swirl the oil. We'll end it here, folks. Join us for the next video. I guess maybe it'll be Tuesday at the rate we're going. This is our last episode. Well, we'll take this time to wish all the mothers out there another happy Mother's Day. Yep, happy Mother's Day. Don't buy anything off of Jack's list. <laughs> That's good advice always. <laughs> yeah. So uh, see you next time on Pink Chicken and the Lazy Man. Bye, folks.